Welcome to episode three of PSA TV. I'm here with the one and only DJ Lick. DJ Lick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Um, want to thank you publicly. Thank you for being a part of the show. We're trying to change the culture. We're trying to do some big here. <clears throat> this is the third episode I'm doing with no voice. So, uh, but <laughs> we're gonna make it happen now. <laughs> All right. So, um, I've been knowing you a long time. Been knowing you since high school, and uh, just want first before we get into the interview, let the people know how quiet and innocent I was in high school. Do that for me. That is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> the same person. Wow, that's how we gonna do on the show, all right? <laughs> all right. So, um, you a jack of all trades. You do a lot. You involved in the light. Um. I think it's good to be involved in more than one thing. Now put all your eggs in one basket. Uh, could you tell the people what are you involved in? Um, so first of all, I am DJ Mix. I was born and raised here in Shreveport. Um, so I started DJing when I was 16, when I was in high school. Um, that's one of the things that I do. The other thing that I do is the promo pack. Uh, I help with building uh, websites and graphics and digital design, stuff like that. Um, and I also have a festival. It's called Retro City Music Fest. Um, it's going into its sixth year. It's going to be at the Louisiana State Fairgrounds again. Um, and then what else do I do? I manage two artists, Big Round and Isaiah Polk. They're doing really good. They've grown a lot. So praise the Lord. Um, and what else do I do? Oh, I have a, a studio that's opening sometime soon. How's it uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, Registudio. Studio. Yes. <laughs> All right, so um, tell me, what is the key to your success in a business? God, mm. I could not do anything that I do without Jesus. I, I'm everything that I do. I always give glory back to God, and I think that that's why I've had a uh, prolonged success like I've had. Like a lot of people, you know, pick up stuff and put it down and just kind of bounce around. But I think that the key is definitely Jesus. And definitely walking in your own purpose. I can't look at what he's doing and say, oh, you know what? I'm going to start interviewing people. That's not for me. So, of course, it wouldn't work. So, um, I think that's, that, that's definitely. Yeah. I love that answer. Amen. Amen. So, uh, you answered this question, but <clears throat> I did not know you was DJing in high school. What was, like, your first event? What inspired you to start DJing? Um, My cousin, Junior. Um, had a party with my uh, other cousin, Nisi, and uh, rest her soul, but that was her son. And so she bought him like the turntables and set up and he was a DJ. Um, and I can't dance. That's the one. I can do everything else, but I cannot dance. I don't know why God's so funny. But anyway, um, so uh, my cousin Nisi bought him the thing, the uh, turntables and stuff, long story short. And I went up there and I asked them, could I do it? And that's why anytime anybody asks me anything, if they ask me for help or whatever, I always just give to them because that moment literally changed like the traje trajectory of my life. Um, and then this other girl, her name was Mia Haley. She had a sweet 16 and my friend Angel Caston told her that, you know, uh, Alexis DJ let her do it. And that was my first event, my first party, but her mom wanted clean music. And so, um, my mama took me to the radio station and that's where I met uh, Scooter and Breeze and Yoshi. 
And I walked in and my mom was like, you know, she needs some clean music, but they just started asking me questions. And I really feel like God was moving in that moment. And then that's when I met Quinn and Quinn was like, you know, you just, you got something that I want you to come back up here. Mm -hmm. And so I started DJing and I started working at the radio station at 16. So that's that story. That's crazy. Hey, that <laughs> yeah. Because that was just so, you know, just so hey, precise. I believe everything happened for a reason. You know, God don't make mistakes. So just like you said, that one moment was was pivotal to change the trajectory of your life. So that's what's up, man. Um, So what kind of music do you listen to? Oh, uh, you just came in. I listen to gospel all day long. But I yeah. wasn't always like that. Uh, I listen <laughs> to everything. The other day, I just got put on country music. And country music slept. Like, country music goes so... Have you ever listened to country music? Of course. I listen to everything. Country music goes so hard. I, I don't know how I got on it, but I listen to some country music now. But I who? listen to everything. I don't know who it was. I Like, I'm that young. Anyway. You ain't got Shazam? No. You got a Shazam everything. Like, you ask my wife, I'm in the middle of the stove. If I'm in the middle of the stove and I hear a song I like, I put my phone out. It's the app, right? Yeah, the Shazam app. Or oh, you can ask Siri. I'm a, I didn't know you can ask Siri. Siri, what's the song? Look at her. She knows it. Knows it. <laughs> okay, but yeah, I listen to country now. I, of course, I listen to hip hop and rap. Mm. But R&B is like my, my we stuff. We all up on that R&B. Yeah. 90s and 2000s R&B. I listen to everything 2000s. Like, that's my everything. Mm -hmm. I don't really listen to new stuff. It's some songs that I listen to that's new, but I'm not really. The R&B music these days is toxic now. Yeah, very toxic. And I'm in love, so I, I, I can't relate. So you <laughs> see me, I, <laughs> I don't know. It, it just puts you in a mood, like, you know. Mm -hmm. So I listen to R&B. I listen to country. Mm -hmm. Rock, some rock, too. I listen, to, I listen to a lot of white people music, like, all the time. Rock music. <laughs> it ain't just for the white people. I listen to a lot of, um, you know, pop music. Yeah, you know, you know <laughs> black people started everything. Yeah. I don't know if you... Okay. We know the truth. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so um, I asked you yesterday to get your top 10, your top 10 favorite artists. This is not best artists. So y'all don't slay her if, if it ain't your P, it ain't your top ten. It's her top ten. You feel me? Okay. Right. I'm ready. Let's get it. Lil Wayne, Kanye West for sure. Um, Webby, everything Webby. I love Webby so much. Webby, okay. Webby was like the one. But anyway, um, so Webby. Um, I like two chains. A lot, a lot of people don't be giving two chains as far. He had a little run. Two chains really go hard. <laughs> um, Kevin Gates. I've just now started liking Kevin Gates the past few years. I ain't like him at first with all that. Mm -hmm. no, I, ain't, I ain't like that. I ain't like that. But I'll anyway, see. it's your top ten. You know, know. <laughs> what am I at five? You're okay. Five. Um. Hmm. Mm hmm. I used to like, and I still would listen to it to this day, Young Nation. That was my, I love Young Nation shows. Okay. Okay. Um, and then who else? You got FOMO. Of course, my artist, Big Round. Okay. Um, Isaiah the, Paul, he I wrote some right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what we had two. You um, got two more. Roger Graps. Does that count? I didn't know that. He raps. He has, I'm going to let you hear the song. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah. a really good rapper. That's what's up. But don't tell him I said that. But I'm going to still put him on my list. <laughs> <laughs> um and then um I don't know. One more. One more. This will get tricky because somebody getting left off. Hmm. I uh, I don't know. I really don't know. I'm gonna throw me a, some names. I'm gonna be your favorite rapper. Okay. <laughs> PSA Ace <laughs> dropping the PSA mixtape oh, on y'all yeah. quickly. Yeah. Oh, I, young boy. That's young boy. All right, so I, I'm a, I'm not gonna slay you for uh, not naming Tory Lanez. We ain't even gonna get into that. Tory Lanez makes some hits though. His his actions, I don't know, but you know, his this hits. ain't about his actions. You you're right. The 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 dude talented and talented. point blank period. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, um, so you talked about Ratchet City Face earlier. How did you get that started, like? You created it, right? God created it. God created it through you. I, like, I know it's I'm like, sorry okay, not girl. being. I'm sorry for not being politically or no, 
it's spiritually could. correct. The only thing, the only reason I say that, and I always like make sure that people know that, is because like that's like the truth. I was sitting there, <laughs> minding my business, and one day the Lord told me, Alexis, throw a festival. And I literally remember getting on my phone, typing in how to throw a festival, mm -hmm. and like I like I started from that scratch. And so when I started it, I had just graduated from college. Um, and my intentions was to go to Florida to Winter uh, Park, Florida at Full Sail. Full Sail is like a music school. It's like one of the only uni music universities or whatever. Um, long story short, so the Lord told me to go back to Shreveport. And I said, you crazy? Why would I do that? I was in New Orleans. I was having the time of my life or whatever. And so I said, okay, testing God. I said, um, if I go back to Shreveport, I got to have a five job. I'm not going back to just work well or whatever. And so... A job that I had applied for months ago that I never heard nothing back from, like that next day, I got a call and it was like, are you still interested in the job? And it was at KCAL when I was working at the um, mm -hmm. news station. And so I was like, all right, God, I'm going to go back. And so I graduated on the 12th. I started on the 17th. And then that same week, that's when God told me to throw the, throw the festival. And so I just started writing it out. Because mm -hmm. I'm a heavy believer in write the vision, make it plain, like to. write it down. And so I wrote it down. And here we are. The rest is history. Hey, that's what's up. That's very inspirational. <laughs> kind of, I wasn't away, but kind of had a similar story. You know, I drive trucks and, you know, I'm just on the road by myself, just thinking, you know, just talking to me and God. And, time. you know, all this, this, this happened so quickly. Like, I didn't tell anybody I was doing this until what, last week. Right. And I already got like seven interviews. So, Praise, Praise God. God. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I wanted to ask you, and crazy that I had this question because how the interview is going, but so you go to church, right? What yeah. church are you a member of? Word of God. Word of God. Okay, so um, in my opinion, I do go to church. Mm -hmm. I actually was going to church every Sunday before I started driving trucks. truck. Since mm -hmm. I started driving, it's really been like, I go when I can type mm -hmm. thing. So um, I want to ask you, how do you feel about doing, hosting secular events or basically being in the world? Because with your, with your craft, you have to be in the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, Baptist people, Christian people, church going people are some of the most judgmental people on earth. So you have to deal with how people look at you, mm -hmm. um, when you when you decide to, Okay, this is you know for God, and um, this is a party I'm DJing. You know, mm -hmm. with but to get on music playing and all that. You know what I mean? So, how do you balance it? How you feel about it? Um, to be completely honest, I do uh kind of go back and forth about it a lot. But um, as far as just like the festival and music goes, I really built the the festival, or the Lord helped me build it on the fact that. When you go to church, that's your pastor speaking into your life, right? Mm -hmm. Of course, there's a lot of people who aren't in church, don't believe in God, don't know nothing or whatever. And it's the idea of you may be the only Jesus that somebody sees. Mm -hmm. And so when I was building a festival, of course, I wanted to keep it, you know, Jesus centered as much as, much as possible. And so um, I built it on the idea that I may be the only time and the only person that in the only place that they ever get to see Jesus, that they ever get to see or hear his word or whatever like that. So I know that although my pastor is reaching me because I'm in a church, I can reach people that he could never reach and that he could never talk to in his, in his work. I, when I first met Round and Isaiah, they were in the festival, but they were not in the word. They, would, they didn't know God. But now that has totally changed. And so that kind of helped me feel like, I was doing what I was supposed to do, you know? And, it, mm -hmm. and it, it's like, like you said, it's hard to balance it because right. like, even when I do gigs, I try not to play like, you know, stuff that's too, you know, too far gone, like it's the demonic enough, stuff, it's like, you know? It's, it's, it's difficult, but like I said, I think that's powerful what you said. That's true. You might be the only a glimpse of Jesus or somebody who believes, you know what I'm saying? Right. So I think that's very powerful. And I can back that up with some scripture. The, the Bible says that you are in the world, but you're not of the world. So even mm -hmm. if you go to a bar, that don't mean that you have to get drunk. That don't mean that you have to 
uh, you know, act out of your own character, but like you could still go to the bar, enjoy yourself, have fun in a Christ like way. You know, God has called us to live a life, a prosperous life, and He don't want us to be in the closet in the back in the booth, you know, reserved to ourselves because then how are we gonna share? How can I share that with you? You know what I'm saying? How could I tell somebody at the bar that man, Jesus and bless me, like you never know how how God is gonna send you out into right. the world. So even though you in the world, you're not of the world. So that's right. kind of how the, the basis of what I do that's because it's like the Ratchet City Music Fest. Oh yeah, I want to go to that, and then you come and you hear a bunch of Jesus stuff, and it's like <laughs> <laughs> I tricked you. But anyway, <laughs> and the road <laughs> thing. But yeah, I think uh, I think the Ratchet City Fest personally one of my favorite events in the city. Even though I have not been in the last two years, I'm. You you know I'll be wanting to be there. I be, but you know, we got we got careers, but uh hopefully twenty twenty three. I'm new. PSA might might gonna put me in that thing. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so um so with uh with your growth and everything that you got going, you're very successful. Um, do you deal with any hate in the city or is it all love? I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. I, it sounds like so I really don't know. Like nobody mm. ever come to me and say, I hate you or I don't like you. You know what I'm saying? That ain't how I work. But like I can tell, like little, you know, little slick little sauce stuff, mm. but bless your heart, because you don't find your way. But hey, um, I like to ignore them. It I, hurt. I, I honestly don't know. I had a couple of um <clears throat> um legends in the city kind of approach me on some stuff, but Rada beat them up, so it's okay. <laughs> I know that right. <laughs> but anyway, um, like they it was never on no disrespectful stuff. It was just like on some, I don't know. Some people they just don't want you to get get, you know, above people, them. man. Look, people want to help you as long as they can keep you down under them. And I want you to surpass them. That's what it was. <laughs> yeah, but um it's all good though. That's what's up. That's a good answer. So uh last but not least, I got a question for you. Would you rather? <laughs> would you rather make ten bands a month for the rest of the year? Do the math on it. Or would you rather get a hundred k in cash right now? Tell me why. Um, I would get the. I probably would get the ten k a month mm. because I would take that to the bank. And get a loan on it so I can get some leverage. Some loans, I don't want to go too deep far in it, but I could get more money in a loan mm -hmm. for what I got, and then I could pay off the loan with what I'm getting, if that makes sense. So the 240, that's yeah, I would, get, I would get the 10. I would get the 10. I was doing yeah. math in my head hey. for real, like, dang, what would I do? That's 120K. It's 120? It's 120. That's at the end of the year. I'm not going to do Okay, then. Well, look, y'all. I just want to again thank you and tell you, um, brother to sister, I'm proud of you. You're doing great things. Uh, keep growing, and um, you're inspiring a lot of people. Even if they don't tell you, they watching you. That's one thing I know. They watching you. <laughs> it don't matter if you get two likes or th twenty views. They see it. Mm -hmm. They see it. Everybody. Yeah, man. So uh, PSA TV, we finna get up out of here and remember. We in Shreveport. If you need it, we got it. Yeah. <laughs>